Hey, all you uh, diligent uh, AP Bio students, I'm sure you're at home clinging to your book, getting ready for AP Bio exam. That's all great. Uh, I wanted to, to kind of start these screencasts for you. Uh, I think it's going to be a good way to kind of set a log for you to go back and, and review the, co the topics that we've covered in class. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put these out there, probably on YouTube, uh, for you to review back too. Uh, I also just want to use this time right now to go over um, fermentation. So it's kind of like a topic that gets brushed off to the end of most um, units on cellular respiration, but it's actually one of the more interesting topics I feel, uh, and certainly we rushed through it too. So I want to make sure that you understand it, and it seemed like there were a lot of questions at the end of our last class. So I'm, I'm going to spend a few minutes uh, talking about that just so you're fully prepared. Um, so let's go back and review these, uh, these topics. Um, so for fermentation, for both types of fermentation, you start off with glucose um, all the same, just, just like in uh, under normal uh, circumstances. The thing is, is that you, as you're performing glycolysis, which everything here is the same, you're making those two ATPs as normal. You're uh, converting NADH, or NAD plus, excuse me, to NADH as usual. And you're arriving at pyruvate as usual. But in an anaerobic bacteria cell, uh, what would happen is that these um, NADHs would accumulate. Um, so there's no way to get rid of these electrons. Okay, so normally you'd have a situation where you'd get rid of those electrons. This doesn't happen. Uh, so what happens is you, you have kind of a bottleneck in this stage. So you run out of uh, you run out of empty NAD plus. The way uh, these uh, anaerobic cells have uh, evolved to deal with this problem is that they've found a new substance to. Um, to basically to reduce, and actually I shouldn't say that they evolved this way. This was the first way uh, that organisms created energy. So uh, our form of cellular respiration actually evolved afterwards. So this is the actually the primitive true form of energy production, but that's a different story. Um, so what's going to happen here is that these electrons are now going to be transferred from NADH to pyruvate, thereby reducing it. Okay, what's going to happen? is that because of those electrons uh, reducing pyruvate, you're going to get a new molecule that's going to go down here. And the new molecule you get is lactate. Okay, So once free, these NAD pluses can then go back to uh, start the cycle all over again, each time repeating to ATP, each time getting more energy. Okay, So up until here, it's pretty much the same thing, except now we're going to reduce pyruvate with those electrons, thereby freeing up NAD plus to go back and repeat repeat the process. So it's not a really um, robust energetic system. You're not creating a lot of ATP, but you can just com completely do this over and over again. So you get the product lactate. And that's where it kind of gets interesting too, because um, the organisms that do this, the, the anaerobic bacteria, and I, I don't know if I, I glossed over this, but not all bacteria are, are anaerobic, but the ones that, that um, are not found in oxygen environments. This is the these are the bacteria that I'm talking about. So that for them, uh, oxygen is toxic. Um, so they perform this energy production without it. The bacteria that um, that do this, they've been used to make a lot of different things. They make cheese, yogurt, and that horrible stuff called sauerkraut. The reason that a lot of these sour substances, so um, you want to think pickles, kimchi, sauerkraut. Uh, the, way, the reason they're bitter and well, I guess sour is is from that lactic acid that the organism basically secretes. Okay, our our muscles. And we actually had some good conversation in class about this. Our muscles um, kind of behave as facultative anaerobes, meaning that they can, in an anaerobic environment, uh, participate in anaerobic um, forms of, of cell respiration. So they can per perform lactic acid fermentation. Um, same process, generating uh, lactate or lactic acid. Uh, for the longest time, we thought this contributed to muscle cramps and soreness. That's actually not the case. Lactate is actually a very, um, it's actually very uh, energetic. And what we can do is we can dump this lactic acid into our blood and take it to the liver, and the liver can basically break it down and use it as a fuel um, 
in a, in a very complex process that we don't really need to go into. So we can actually use that as a fuel source. It's actually very, very energetic and elite athletes are fully capable of doing this, okay? Um, so that's lactic acid fermentation. There's a second form of, of fermentation that we talked about in class, um, that being alcoholic fermentation. Okay, so the process is essentially the same here. This is just good old normal glycolysis. You get those two ATPs each time you do it. Um, NAD plus conversion to NADH, but you hit that bottleneck once again, and so those electrons are going to be, whoops, So, let me find this pen here. Right, so the electrons, they go from, from uh, NADH to pyruvate again. Uh, the difference here is that carbon dioxide is taken off of pyruvate. Okay, so for each pyruvate you get, you take off a carboxyl group, you get two carbon dioxide um, leaving. So this is going to contribute the, the carbon dioxide you see in some of the substance Produce it, uh, produced, and you're left with this two carbon molecule called ethanol or alcohol. Okay, so same process. NAD plus is then free to go back and repeat this process. Each time the process is repeated, you get two ATP, and so the, the process goes on and on. Okay, this is the process that uh, we use yeast to perform, right? So when making wine, um, I guess don't, don't tell your parents I told them, well, that's not a big deal. Yeah. Wine's no big deal. So, um, you know, you take your grapes, and basically your, your grapes are going to be your uh, sugar source in, in wine, right? So you put, um, you put grapes in a barrel, um, you add some yeast and let it sit there, let it do its job, and then after a certain time, um, those uh, facultative anaerobes are going to, to produce alcohol. Um, and for the yeast, it's actually toxic. So when a when a yeast cell makes alcohol, basically it it um it dumps it out of the cell for a certain time. You know the yeast that are that are used in producing wine eventually overwhelmed and die. Um, but they would normally kind of eject uh, this this product, this this alcohol product. Um, okay, so in some beverages we keep the carbon dioxide in, so that'd be things like beer. Um, okay, that's that's basically it. So. Um, the other interesting thing, so we've, you know, you had questions in class, well, do our cells um, do this? And the answer is no, because, um, well, I don't know, it's, maybe it's debatable for some of us, but, um, you know, if we, if we did perform that, we'd be this guy, right? Uh, every time you perform some sort of energetic step, you would produce uh, ethanol as a, as a byproduct, and uh, obviously not good. We probably wouldn't survive very long past childhood anyway. Um, so we definitely don't do alcoholic fermentation. Okay, so that's it. That's a quick review. I hope that helps clear up some things. I know we kind of rushed to the end of this uh, during class. Uh, feel free to stop by and see me on Monday if you have any questions. Also, you can email me your questions. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely take those. Um, other than that, I hope everything's going well and you're being productive and everything. Okay, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye.